Point of order, Mr Nigel Dodds. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, earlier today at Northern Ireland Questions, I raised an issue about the, uh, what the Secretary of State, and I have given her notice that I would be raising this point of order, about what the Secretary of State would be doing as a result of the outrageous and scandalous decision of the Parades Commission uh, last night in Northern Ireland, which is causing enormous pain and tensions to be arising in North Belfast and across the province, and has the potential for severe trouble on our streets. In replying to my question, the Secretary of State did not address the point of her powers on an application by the Chief Constable. I have to say, Mr Speaker, in my view, that was deliberately deceptive, and I think that that was absolutely outrageous and will not go down well in terms of the people back home. The Secretary of State has a responsibility to do something about the outrageous decisions Order. of the Parades Commission in Northern Ireland, Order. and unless she acts, yes. there will be difficulties Order. ahead. I thank the Right Honourable Gentleman. It is only with great hesitation that I interrupt the Right Honourable Gentleman, who is a very senior and respected member of the House. He must not, however, whilst giving expression to his views, he must not use the words deliberately deceptive. He must not use those words, and I would ask him, he's a man of great intelligence and vocabulary, to use an alternative formulation, or at any rate, to withdraw those words. I will await the, uh, if the Secretary of State is here, I will judge if she wants to say anything, and then I will make a judgment on the matter. No, I can't have a conditional withdrawal from the right honourable gentleman. It is open to the Secretary of State to come to the box if she so wishes, and I will afford her that opportunity. But those words must be considered in their own terms, and I must ask him, I'm not cavilling at anything else the right honourable gentleman has said, to withdraw those words. It is very clear that those words are disorderly, and I must ask him to withdraw them and to use alternative words, or no alternative words, but to withdraw them. Speaker, these, uh, the situation in Northern Ireland today is extremely difficult and tense, and I have to say that people are very, very concerned about what may happen. And for the Secretary of State to spend an entire question time and not refer to her powers in this matter is, I think, something that is unforgivable and something that cannot be glossed over. Well, I didn't seek to gloss over anything, and I'm sure the Secretary of State doesn't, but I must say to the Honourable Gentleman, with great courtesy, that he has now twice failed to withdraw the words which were disorderly and which I have asked him, most courteously, to withdraw. I must warn the Right Honourable Gentleman it pains me to do this, that if he persists in his refusal to comply with my order to withdraw, I shall be compelled to name him, and I don't wish to do that. Can I please ask the Right Honourable Gentleman, who has made his point, and to which the Secretary of State will have an opportunity, if she wishes to reply, simply to take back those particular words. I'm not asking him to withdraw his whole contribution. He must withdraw the words deliberately deceptive. It is not appropriate to accuse any member of this House of seeking deliberately to deceive or mislead it. Please withdraw the words now. So we have an interim step. You can direct him to leave the chamber. In terms of... I have yet to hear any explanation from the Secretary of State as to why that glaring omission was made in relation to these important matters. And I, I feel, Mr Speaker, that the matter of such, is such import and importance that I'm reluctantly un, not unable to comply on this occasion with that. And I, I stand over what I said, and I have to say that the people of Northern Ireland are in a very, very serious position indeed. And the Secretary of State needs to do something to intervene in this matter, and she needs to do it quickly. I made it clear, and I hope the House will accept that it was appropriate to do so, that I cannot engage in negotiation with colleagues whereby they agree to withdraw something if someone else does or doesn't do something. And therefore, very regretfully, after a display, I hope, of some patience and the proffering to the Right Honourable Gentleman of a number of opportunities to make good, I am forced, I feel, under the power given to me by Standing Order No. 43, to order the Right Honourable Member to withdraw immediately from the House for the remainder of this day's sitting.